Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We are down in Melbourne at Harrop's Melbourne facility. We're down here for our special project, which is pretty special to me because it's for my car, the big block Chev on the dyno. It's currently down at Dandy Engines, but before we go down, we're gonna check out the Harrop facility. We're here with Heath, managing director or boss man, as I like to say, and he's gonna show us around. It's great to have you guys down, Al, and we've got a little bit of history with the Iron Line project. We're certainly well known for superchargers, so we're excited to show you through and give you a, a bit of a walkthrough of how we go from design concept right through to finished parts. We've given you a few teasers in the last few episodes about the big block going into the crown and uh, what sort of induction system it was going to run, and uh, now it's time to reveal all. Let's go and have a look at the good stuff and meet the engineers. Sounds good. I guess where this project kind of started on my end was I was sort of interested in doing a, a supercharger of some description on the, on the big block just to get away from turbos for a change. And um, so I went looking and I thought surely there's a supercharger kit available using a modern supercharger such in, in a similar vein to the Iron Lions setup. And I googled and googled and googled and, and, and nothing came up. It was, you could only get old root style, um, you know, sort of traditional chrome blowers with carbies on them sort of thing. So I, I actually contacted Heath and just said, oh, have you ever heard of anything? Because you know, I, I knew they, they didn't have a product because that was the first place I looked. And um, Heath said, oh no, there is, there's no such thing, but we're actually thinking about exploring modern supercharging on older iron engines, like you know, small block, big block, that sort of thing. So that's, that's right. where this all started. I then sent the engine to these guys and um, how did the process go from there? Well, once it arrived, we often either scan an engine or the vehicle. Some of the projects are vehicle specific, where it's a complete kit to go into a certain make and model. Yep. But these engine kits are becoming really popular for the resto mod or engine swap market, a little yep. bit like what you're doing. So Justin uh, arranged to have the engine scanned, and that's what we're looking at on the screen now as it arrives. So it's effectively a long assembly and getting really high quality data to build the concept model from is, is absolutely critical. And the quality of scanning equipment has increased massively in the last five to 10 years, yeah. which makes this process that much more efficient. And Justin can then start to look at how our supercharger manifold assembly, which is intercooled, needs to integrate both from a cylinder head and also drive system. So in the case of the big block Chev, um, it's got a fairly narrow valley compared to what we're used to. So the LS stuff's fairly wide um, and the bolts go straight down in the cylinder heads, which leaves a lot of room for an intercooler core. Big block Chev, we don't have that luxury. So we you had to do a lot of shuffling things around and, and um, uh, design iterations to, to make everything fit in the space that we've got. So we've got a decent core in there and also giving you a decent drive system. So it's 10 PK, biggest crank pulley that we could fit, which is 245 mil in diameter, and we've got a 2650 supercharger on top there. That's right, Justin. So the TVS 2650 is the largest displacement currently, so it's 2.65 litres of air per revolution. It's positive displacement. But we've proven consistently that even on larger cube engines like Godzilla, which is 445 cubic inch, the 7.3, um, capable of 1,300 horsepower plus. We don't have those ambitions necessarily for the big block, yep. but it's an efficient air pump and the intercooler system is going to take care of those inlet air temperatures. So we really focus on ease of fitment and also modularity. So we've got that front inlet forward facing integrated drive and that takes an LS style throttle body. Yep. But we also have left and right bias depending on where you prefer to have the throttle body position. But for your engine that we're going to test, we've actually got our relatively new 110 millimeter throttle plate that's integrated into the, the front cover assembly and, and drive by wire. So it's it's got every opportunity to get air efficiently yeah, into the rotor group. It's plenty of throttle, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of people love the top mount supercharger look. They open the hood and there it is. Yep. This is driven from the front and has the air inlet at the front, which yep. is good for packaging. But the inverted style gets it down in the valley of the V8, particularly on some of those more modern yep. V8s and gets an, a lower hood profile. So that's what you're seeing for things like LSAs and uh, that sort of thing. And the Coyotes. Yep. But let's take a look at what Clayton's got and we can show you the, the next generation. Thanks, Justin. No worries, mate. 
So what we've got here is the modern GM truck engine. So this is an L8T, it's a direct injection 6.6 .6 litre iron block. Yep. So found really commonly now, currently in the US particularly. So this is for a, uh, what they call a truck, but like a heavy... Heavy duty heavy Silverado, duty, uh, GMC. Like 3500 sort of thing. So is it, would it be the competition for your Godzilla Ford engine? It would be the red team version of the, um, okay. the Godzilla. So interestingly, Ford have got the 7.3 power stroke diesel option, and they've also got the 7.3 Godzilla gas option, petrol. And with GM, they've got a 6.6 .6 litre Duramax turbo diesel V8 and this L8T, which is a 6.6 .6 litre iron block petrol engine. So we're using our inverted LT supercharger. So again, it's a TVS 2650, and Clayton's done all of the modelling here where we're actually going to run this engine with port injection because for the engine swap market, it's going to be very desirable to use a traditional yeah. port injection. By inverting the supercharger, you can see once we pull it away, the, um, the air discharges up out of the blower and then across and down through the intercooler system into the actual cylinder heads. So we've done a similar system on the LT4 for the Camaro, and that's the factory supercharged uh, GM engine, which has a 1740 Eaton supercharger, okay. whereas this is a, a 2650, so quite a, quite a bit bigger. So unlike the big block where we took the engine and scanned it from you, this CAD data is actually available from SEMA Garage in the US. So we're SEMA members as part of our US company as well as Harrop HQ. So it's a very complete CAD model and gives us a great starting point, almost a perfect starting point to start looking at designing how the supercharger is going to package. Clayton, I can see that you've got some uh, green coloured sandwich plates in there between the blower and the head. What's that all about? Yeah, so that's our, uh, where we've got the port injectors. So these engines are DI only from the factory. So we've put a sandwich plate in between the blower and the head to run the port injector. Um, which is the blue little injector you can see in there. We opted to run them underneath in the valley so we get a slightly better shot at the port rather than running them on the top and the outside and it's a little bit tidier as well. Yeah, so. don't worry. So you've got the option to run uh, port direct or both with this setup? Yeah, correct. So that's the, yeah, the blue, light blue bits, the DI rail. So you can run either or or both. Yeah, cool. Well, we've seen the virtual model. Let's go and see where the action happens on the shop floor and the hard parts. Awesome. So we're out into the noisy section here. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there's lots of activity. We've been at this facility since 2000. But there's a lot of diversity to what we design and manufacture. A lot of it's a Harrop product. Yep. But we've got customer programs where it's their design, it's their IP, but they need our quality and capability on manufacturing. So trucks, trains, trams, submarines, aircraft, but the exciting stuff is the Harrop proprietary, yep. you know, superchargers, diffs, brakes, cooling, drive line. So let's get down there and have a look. Cool. This is a great example. So these are tram rotors, clearly not high performance race car, yeah. but needs to be durable and the metal quality is really important. Yeah. So Al, this is one of our two coordinate measuring machines and quality is such an integral part of what we do. So we don't make bad parts. So first off inspection, this supercharger housing gets dimensionally checked. That probe will measure down to microns. The geometry on the machining is not overly complicated, but the tolerances are very precise. And VJ will make sure those first off parts are correct so the guys can go and make 100 or 200. Yep. So upstairs we spoke to Justin and Clayton about computer-aided design. Yep. This is computer-aided manufacturing. So all of the CNC machines need to have a program for each specific part. And Brendan here is looking at how he's going to actually fixture the, the casting in this case. It's a supercharger housing, just like we're using on the big block. Yep. Some of the machines have got 120 tool magazines and they're five axis, so we can turn the part any which way and it's about optimising the tip time. Like yep. How quickly can we machine it accurately? Yep. Brendan's a guru and with this software we can simulate that before we actually get the part on the machine. Another important thing, if you have a Harrop part and you have to pick it up in say 15 years, it's been able to identify it. So we laser etch almost all of the parts. Yep. And we did something neat with your rocker covers where we've actually sure got did. the Skid Factory yeah. logo etched onto the, uh, the powder coat. So that was done in this machine? Yeah, we use this machine. It's all programmed and we've got some large pulleys that have been done now for superchargers. So identification's key. Yep. 
So I'm pretty familiar with uh, the casting process via my mate Denny, who's a pattern maker. Uh, however, his patterns or moulds do not look like this. What's going on here? Well, it's a good example of our vertical integration. Our foundry, Harrop Casting Technologies, used to be next door, but we actually had to relocate it to South Australia to get a much bigger facility. But like all of the, the CAD models that we saw upstairs, the patterns for the sand casting happens here. And this is a high density resin, so it's really hard wearing, where a traditional tooling board will have like a lacquer or put over yeah. the top. So this is just a more modern way of, in CAD, designing the tooling and then manufacturing it with a CNC machine and then having it all go together to make those one-shot sand moulds. Okay, and so this will last a lot longer than your traditional timber with a, with a coating yeah. like what Denny uses. Yeah, durability is a key. If you're making a thousand plus parts, yeah. you want to be able to, the first part needs to be as good as the last part. Yeah. Al, this is a great example of what the castings look like as a raw casting that have been powder coated black. Yep. We've got these locating tabs and that's how we actually hold it in the machine and I'll show you that now. These are twin pallet horizontal machining centres so the spindle does all the milling at a horizontal direction as opposed to vertical. And this is how we actually hold the casting to do that first operation and that would mount to a manifold plate. So if I unlock that We'll actually do two parts on the one tombstone and the machine will rotate this in process. So what we've got here is off one to machine this face and then we take this off and we locate it here and this is the roughing operation. You can see it's very coarse in here. The third op, which is happening on the other side of that screen, is doing the finished cut for the supercharger board. Okay. So we're in one of the assembly rooms. After the castings have been precision machined, they come in here for assembly. Tang puts together these, what we call the head unit, so it's the main air pump module. And every one of these gets 100% tested next door. So we've got them serial numbered. These ones are for LS, these might be for Tundra or Ram. So it's really diverse in terms of what we have to put together here. And then the actual kitting happens next door with Steve. So yep. lower manifolds, leak testing, injectors, rails, O-rings, and then we box them up. Yep. So these two look like it might be the new Battle of the Titans, the Godzilla and the L8T, is it? L8T, yeah. It's a truck engine. It's a 6.6 litre iron block petrol, um, the one we looked at with Clayton. It's getting yep. the, the inverted supercharger. But it's really Ford and GM's current generation big block Chev. Yeah, nice. So okay. that was on display at Motor X. This is ready to run on the engine dyno and we'll be doing some comparisons very yeah. soon on Harrop TV. So running it up as is NA. Correct. And then charged, yep. I think if we run it 98, aspirated just like it is from the factory, unopened, we'll put the supercharger on at low boost, factory throttle body on, on 98. Yeah. And then we'll probably throw some E85 at it and see what sort of timing it wants to take. But again, it's a truck cam profile like it was with the Godzilla testing, but a really good, platform crate engine that's yeah. readily available. Yep. Like the days of the 5.3, um, they're still over there in the US, but they're not in production anymore. So yep. their availabilities. So this is gonna be the new junkyard engine? I think so. You just get more capacity. Who's complaining? Not us. So part of the process of design development is the testing and validation. And our two hub dyno cells are critical for that, where we do it on vehicle. So yep. we make a new part, we make a change, we can test it here. It's a controlled environment. We invested in the mainline Pro Hub because the V8s with big superchargers that are getting well north of a thousand horsepower, we needed this dyno to be able to hold it. And next door we've got the dyno pack, which is fantastic for all-wheel drive, four-wheel drives and other vehicles that we need to do sometimes concurrently. Engine dynos are amazing and we've got great partners to do that, like with Dandy Engines for the big blocks. So it'd be fantastic to get down there and do some pulls and see what sort of numbers we get. I know I'm looking forward to it, a bit nervous, but uh, ready. Well, thanks for showing us around your incredible facility, Heath. It's, it's uh, so amazing to see such an awesome facility in Melbourne, run by Australians, making quality parts for both the Australian and overseas markets. It's a, it's a credit to you guys. Thanks, Al and Woody, and it's an incredible team that we've got here. We've been doing it in Melbourne since 1955. The guys are incredibly passionate. We love cars and making things go better, just as much as you do. Yep. And it's been a lot of fun and looking forward to the next step. Awesome.
Speaking of making things better, we've got a date with Frank at Dandy Engines. The big block is bolted up to the dyno. The 2650 is sitting on top looking beautiful. We're ready to fire it up and hopefully make some steam. You can check that out next week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.